So, Mr. Lewin making arguments ultimately successful as the motion for a new trial was defeated. So, we saw Mr. Robert Durst sitting there as well. We've been talking about his health. There's no better person to chat with about how Mr. Durst might be doing, get the take on the trial, potential appellate issues, than his longtime attorney, Dick DeGaron, who joins us now at Law and Crime. Uh, Mr. DeGaron, thank you so much. I appreciate your joining. Um, you know, I could go through your resume and your CV, and, but we, it's a short show. You know, I don't have that much time. I'd, re I'd, re I'd rather get to some of the questions here that we've got for you. First of all, because we have seen your client uh, most recently uh, yesterday looking a, a little frail. How's he doing? And, uh, you know, what's his take been on the latest procedures with the sentencing and the motion for new trial being denied? Well, you know, I don't expect to evoke any sympathy for him, but he's in very bad physical condition, very bad health. It was obvious yesterday. I hadn't seen him in a couple of weeks, and he had uh, looked even worse yesterday than the last time I saw him. And last time I saw him, I didn't think he would survive the uh, 15 days of cross-examination. We are, he's going to appeal the conviction, uh, but I don't know that he's going to last another six months, certainly not long enough for the appeal to go through. We know that the sentencing starts that clock, uh, and, and I, I'm sure the wheels have been in motion. Are you handling the appeal, or is that uh, some other uh, entity that's going to do that? I will not be handling the appeal. So the new trial motion, can we, I don't know, assume that's sort of a roadmap for what the appellate issues might be in the case? And if so, what, what do you think are the big ones? No, there will be some other appellate issues. The um, motion for new trial is basically a formality. We knew going in that it was going to be uh, overruled. Uh, Mr. Lewin knew going into the hearing that it would be overruled. And so there was no reason for him to... Uh, pontificate for the 45 minutes, I think it was, that he did. Um, so I made a kind of a wise-ass remark after he did that, that um, to the effect that dancing in the end zone is uh, bad taste. Yeah, it, it is, as you say, a formality. And, and you know, you got to make it for the record. I understand that. Let me ask uh, about uh, some of the elements of the trial that caught people's attention. Uh, and one of them that I can't forget is what I'm calling the not ready for crime time players acting out of the Morris Black incident in Galveston, which as I talked to a Judge Chris about this as well. When you folks reenacted it in L.A., it was a rerun, basically. You, you had done similarly in Galveston to uh, find effect because, uh, as we know, Mr. Durst was found not guilty by reason of a, a self-defense defense there. What, what's your take on both trials allowing that very unusual demonstration and how effective it might have been? Well, the demonstration itself was not unusual. That's uh, common for a, a trial in front of a jury. <clears throat> but I don't think that the evidence about Galveston should have been in this case at all. I mean, after all, he was the jury found him not guilty, a jury of 12 people. Uh, found him not guilty, and uh, and, and rightfully so, given uh, the evidence in the Galveston case. So what's your but, take uh, on that? I mean, there, there were basically three trials rolled into this one trial against your client. Uh, we can say the same about the uh, Kathy Durst element of this trial. Why was all of that let in, in your opinion? Well, it was let in because the prosecutor wanted it in, that a judge allowed it in, and we objected to it. But our objections uh, were overruled. And I assume so, that will be a chunk in the appeal. Go ahead. Well, but the, the real reason for it was to paint uh, Bob Durst as being the most evil person on the earth. Uh, and the prosecution did a very good job of doing that. As I said, uh, I don't uh, hope by any means to create any sympathy for Bob, um, particularly given what the public has been fed about him, but still, as far as a fair trial is concerned, uh, I think it was uh, not that because of all this other stuff. It, it definitely gave the jury a lot to think about. The trial lasted more than four months. On the Kathy Durst element, you know, we're hearing reports that the DA in Westchester County is going to convene a grand jury, that there is an indictment in the offing. 
for her murder against your client, Robert Durst. What have you heard on that? Well, we've only heard what the prosecutor has said, what uh, what's in the media. And um, frankly, if there is a fair grand jury presentation made in Westchester, there will be no indictment because there's no evidence. Uh, it's completely circumstantial in nature that Kathy Durst uh, disappeared while they were having troubles uh, in their marriage. Um, but there's no evidence of what happened to her, when or where or how. And thus, there's nothing for a grand jury to decide. There's certainly nothing for a jury to decide. Yeah, the big question would be what new information has come along since the original investigation, you know, decades ago. And I don't know, to your point, what they're going to glom onto. Uh, if we believe that in this trial, the trial just completed in Los Angeles, there wasn't truly a uh, proof of murder of Kathy Durst, it was just alluded to, what are they going to do with that? And if that's the case, why would a DA bother to follow up with that? It just makes no sense to me. Well, Bob Durst is an easy target. Uh, he's uh, He made himself an easy target when he went on that um, program, uh, The Jinx, which was very good entertainment, but it was not a documentary. And he uh, was not well-spoken at all during that, and it appeared that he had confessed. It wasn't a confession at all. Uh, he just realized that he'd been tricked. Um, but at any rate, there's nothing new to answer your question about the Kathy Durst case. Nothing came out in this trial that was new. Uh, the only thing that was different was um, the uh, producers of the Jinx had come along and uh, spent uh, maybe 100 hours interviewing Bob and, uh, and then splicing and editing that together to make him look evil. And, and it seems that uh, uh, to some degree, perhaps that worked. It's hard to tell exactly what the jury was thinking about. Did you get a chance to talk to any jury members after the trial? Uh, no, we did not. Uh, in, the jurors basically are a captive audience to whatever occurs during the trial. And they, they should be deciding on solely uh, what the evidence is in the trial. Here, I think it was uh, pretty evident that uh, the jurors had other information even before they became jurors about the case. The, the, the program, The Jinx, was widespread. Uh, most of the jurors had either seen part of it or had heard about it. And um, so we're, we're faced with dispelling uh, an Emmy Award-winning uh, entertainment show in addition to fighting the evidence. Yeah, at times it, it did appear to be more uh, entertainment than judicial. Hey, uh, I appreciate your time so much, Mr. DeGarren. As somebody who had the chance to watch this thing unfold, to watch you work, and as an officer of the court myself, I appreciate the, the effort. I uh, wish you the best of luck going forward. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll check in with you again, see how Mr. Durst is doing as this thing continues. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Happy to do it. I don't. I just don't want to sound like it's sour grapes. Uh, it does. No. It doesn't uh, feel good to lose a case like this. I could imagine. I could imagine. But a valiant effort, and uh, and it was uh, it was a pleasure to watch your work, sir. Thanks again, Dick Thanks. DeGere and everybody uh, from Houston. Obviously, the uh, attorney for Robert Durst in the uh, case against Susan Berman, and who knows what else down the road. Let's take a quick break. Come back more on the uh, Long Crime Network coming up. It was the video that shocked the nation. An unarmed black jogger, 25-year-old Ahmad Aubrey, gunned down in broad daylight. The three men charged will now stand trial. For live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the trial, subscribe to Law & Crime on YouTube TV today.